now that we've obtained the copolymer equation, we have a way to determine what will be the composition of a copolymer given the composition of the feed or the reaction mix in terms of monomers one and two. In other words, for the amount of monomer one and monomer two that we add into the reaction mix, what will be the corresponding composition or amount of monomer one and two that are incorporated into the copolymer? In order to get insights into what this equation predicts for different circumstances, I'm going to plot the composition in the copolymer on the y-axis versus the composition in the feed or the reaction mix on the x-axis. And I'm doing this in terms of monomer one because remember I obtained this expression in terms of the mole fraction of monomer one uh, in the feed and in the copolymer. So the first situation that we can think about is if these reactivity ratios are zero. So remember the reactivity ratio expresses the relative rate of the addition of the same monomer uh, to a growing chain versus addition of the other monomer to a growing chain. So in other words, a chain that, an active chain with monomer one at the end, uh, what is the relative rate at which another monomer one will be added relative to monomer two, or the preference for adding the same monomer versus the other monomer. Uh, and that's what these reactivity ratios represent. So if they're both equal to zero, notice that that's saying that the denominator is big with respect to the numerator. So in other words, the cross reaction is preferred relative to the addition of the same monomer. So in other words, a radical doesn't want to react with its own monomer. So if we substitute this into the copolymer equation, what we end up with uh, is basically that this term, is this ratio, is equal to one. And solving for the mole fraction of monomer one in the copolymer, we get that that's equal to a half. So this corresponds to an alternating copolymer. And that makes sense because if each radical will not react with its own monomer, then uh, each chain is going to add the other monomer uh, during the next uh, step of propagation. So for example, a chain that ends in monomer one will add monomer two, and a chain that adds monomer two, ends in monomer two will add monomer one. So it's going to give us an alternate, alternating blocks of monomer one and monomer two, no matter what the composition of monomer one is in the feed. So that corresponds to this line uh, shown uh, in the plot. Another situation that we can think about is if both of these reactivity ratios are equal to one. So notice if I say that these reactivity ratios are equal to one, it means that the rate constant associated with adding the same monomer versus the cross reaction of adding a different monomer are the same because this ratio is equal to one. So if I substitute R1 and R2 equal to one into the copolymer equation and simplify it, I end up with the relationship that the mole fraction of monomer one in the copolymer is equal to the mole fraction of monomer one in the feed. So no matter what I add in the feed, I'm going to get the same mole fraction in the copolymer. And this corresponds to a random copolymer. And again, that also makes sense intuitively because at each step in propagation, addition of monomer one or monomer two are equally likely uh, because these reactivity ratios are equal to one. So that corresponds to this curve two shown in the plot. Now, I can also think about a case where we have differences in the reactivity ratio. So say reactivity ratio one is greater than one and reactivity ratio of two is less than one. So in other words, there's a preference in both cases for monomer one to be added. In other words, a growing chain that ends in monomer one prefers to add monomer one and a growing chain that ends in monomer two also prefers to add monomer one. So that's gonna look like a curve like this. So at a given composition of monomer one in the feed, the copolymer is going to contain a greater fraction of monomer one because monomer one is preferred during the propagation step. We can think of a fourth case where, in this case, both radicals prefer to react with monomer two. So in other words, R1 is less than one and R2 is greater than one. So in other words, a growing chain with monomer one at the end prefers to add monomer two, 
and a growing chain with monomer 2 at the end prefers to add monomer 2. So here we have kind of the opposite case. So no matter what our composition of monomer 1 in the feed, our composition in the copolymer is going to be less than that fractional composition because monomer 2 is preferred to be added during the propagation step. A fifth case we can think about is if both of these reactivity ratios are less than 1. So in other words, the cross reaction is always preferred, but maybe to a different extent, uh, you know, in favoring one monomer versus the other slightly. But in both cases, neither radical prefers to add its own monomer. So in this case, you can have more complicated curves that look like this, because it's kind of going to involve some combination of trans 3 and 4, depending on where you are uh, in the composition space, because it's going to be not only influenced by the slight preference for addition of one monomer versus the other, but also the total amount of one monomer versus the other in the feed. And that can give a curve that has the sigmoidal shape. And what's interesting is that there's an azeotropic point uh, associated with, uh, with this behavior. So in other words, uh, there's some composition where there's a balance between the fact that the other monomer is preferred during propagation versus the fact that the composition favors one monomer versus another. And so at some point, those two facts balance out, or those two uh, considerations balance out uh, to give a composition that is equal uh, in the copolymer to what it was in the feed. The final case we can think about is if both of these reactivity ratios are both greater than one. So in other words, both radicals prefer to add their own monomer, a chain ending in monomer one, wants to add another monomer 1, and a chain ending in monomer 2 wants to add another monomer 2. And so, you know, you might say, well, this is probably not practical to produce copolymers because you're just, uh, you're going to make homopolymers. And that's true. But depending on the magnitudes uh, of these reactivity ratios, there can be kind of a slight preference for uh, one versus the other. And so this can be used as a route to make copolymers that have long blocks of one monomer versus the other. Uh, and so that uh, comes into play in terms of the makeup uh, of the structure of the blocks.